If you want thousands of earthworms to move into your garden almost overnight, subscribe to Evergreen Garden right now because this single principle will permanently change how fertile your soil becomes. Most gardeners chase compost teas, expensive amendments, or fancy worm bins, yet they completely overlook the one thing worms respond to faster than anything else. This is not theory, this is soil biology in action, and once you apply it correctly, worms will come on their own without buying a single one. The one thing that attracts earthworms faster than anything else is moist, decomposing carbon layered directly on the soil surface. Not fertilizer, not manure alone, and not digging. Worms follow moisture and food, and decomposing carbon provides both immediately when done correctly. Why earthworms show up almost instantly when this is done right? Earthworms breathe through their skin, which means they can only survive where moisture levels are high and consistent. Dry soil is a dead zone to them. The moment you create a cool, damp microclimate at the soil surface, worms below sense it and migrate upward. Decomposing carbon, such as cardboard leaves, straw or wood shavings, feeds the bacteria and fungi worms eat, not the worms, directly. When microbial activity spikes, worms follow within hours. What most gardeners get wrong about feeding worms. Many gardeners throw manure or kitchen scraps on dry soil and wonder why nothing happens. Nitrogen-heavy materials heat up, smell and dry out quickly, when exposed. Worms avoid that environment. Carbon materials hold moisture, moderate temperature, and decompose slowly, creating a stable feeding zone. Worms are not scavengers chasing scraps. They are farmers grazing microbial fields. So, the exact material that really works best, and honestly why cardboard is king, Plain brown cardboard works better than almost anything else because it absorbs water like a sponge, blocks sunlight, suppresses weeds, and then breaks down into this fungal-rich humus that worms absolutely love. Just remember, remove any tape and glossy coatings before you use it. You'll want to tear it into large sheets rather than shredding it because, well, sheets just maintain moisture for much longer. Newspaper can also work, but cardboard tends to last longer and attracts more fungal activity, which is a real bonus. Here's how to apply this, so worms arrive by morning. First, start by watering the soil thoroughly before placing anything on top. The soil beneath needs to be already moist to at least 10 to 15 centimeters deep. Then lay the cardboard directly on the soil surface with no air gaps at all. Overlap the edges so no light gets through. Soak the cardboard completely until it is floppy and dark brown. Dry cardboard, well, it repels worms. Wet cardboard, on the other hand, invites them. The ideal thickness and moisture balance, that's what really makes the difference. Use one to two layers of cardboard, not more. If it's too thick, oxygen exchange slows down. Too thin, and it dries far too fast. After soaking, cover the cardboard with 5 to 8 centimetres of organic mulch, such as straw, dried grass clippings, or partially decomposed leaves. This top layer prevents evaporation and, you know, keeps the cardboard damp overnight. So, the ratio that really speeds up worm attraction without causing any unpleasant smells is pretty simple. If you want things to happen a bit faster, just add nitrogen. But do it lightly and correctly. Use one part aged manure or, you know, fresh grass clippings to four parts carbon material by volume. Spread the nitrogen thinly right on top of the wet cardboard, never directly onto bare soil, and then cover it up straight away with mulch. This approach actually feeds the microbes without overheating everything. Worms will come along to feast on the microbial bloom, not the manure itself. So, 
what happens in the first 12 to 24 hours after you've done all this? Well, within just a few hours, microbial respiration goes up under the cardboard. Carbon dioxide levels rise a little, moisture balances out, and the temperature settles nicely. Worms can sense this new gradient, and before long, they start migrating upward through the existing channels. By morning, lifting the cardboard often reveals, well, dozens to hundreds of worms per square meter, even in soil, that, you know, appeared lifeless the day before. So how do you repeat this method across garden beds and orchards? In vegetable beds, simply apply this method between crops or around established plants, making sure to keep the cardboard about 5 centimeters away from the stems. In orchards, just lay the cardboard in a ring under the canopy, right where drip irrigation or rain naturally collects. In raised beds, this method is especially powerful because, well, moisture retention is usually the limiting factor. Why does this work better than worm bins for soil building? Worm bins tend to concentrate worms, but with this method, you're actually integrating them into your soil ecosystem. That way, they build aggregates, improve drainage, and cycle nutrients right there in place. Worm castings deposited directly in the root zone are far more valuable than harvested castings added later. How long should you maintain the system for lasting results? Well, keep the surface covered year-round, that's key. And remember to reapply carbon mulch whenever the previous layer breaks down. Within just a few weeks, worm populations stabilize permanently because, you know, you've removed their biggest enemy, dry, exposed soil, once worms establish breeding zones, you no longer need to attract them. They stay put. This is how real soil fertility is built, not with shortcuts, but with biology working for you. If this guide helped you understand worms in a deeper, practical way, do subscribe to Evergreen Garden for serious, no-nonsense gardening knowledge that actually works. Share this with a fellow gardener who keeps asking why their soil is dead, and I'll see you in the next one.